If you look at the establishing shots of most modern films, such as Guardians of the Galaxy or J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, so when it shows you an establishing shot of a planet or a location, um, very rarely is the camera completely locked off like this, um, and it will just show you like the name of the planet or 10 years later or something like that. The camera will usually be doing something, and something else will be happening in the frame, just to give it a bit more of a dynamic look and keep the audience's interest. Um, so certainly leaving this background like this completely static looks really um, quite boring. And so now we need to add some effects um, and some layers to this to really bring this scene to life and give it a bit more of a dynamic look. So although there is 3D elements uh, of After Effects, uh, what we'll be doing is using the existing images we have to create a fake 3D look or a parallax look to the 2D imagery that we have here. Um, and so, and we can do this just with some clever movement of certain layers in certain ways. So what we need to do now, if you're happy with the way that your moon is orbiting the planet like this, um, we need to group everything except the star. So I'm grouping both the planet, all the layers that make up the planet and the moon together but not the star fields. If you control click or if you click on the moon layer, hold down shift and then click on your continents layer down here. I've now selected the moon and everything that makes up the planet but not the star field. With my time slider at zero I can go to layer, sorry, F, layer, pre-compose and I can name this pre-compose planet and moon. It's super important that you name these groups or pre-composed layers so that uh, you can see when you double click on it what the name of the tab is over here. So this is called planet and moon. It's now isolated like this. A master planet shot is obviously the, uh, the final uh, thing that we'll see at the very end. So we've got planet and moon now. Just, I'm just going to drag this tab over here just so I can get some sense. Um, and put it all in order. So moon intact should be next. So the master planet shot, the planet and moon isolated, and then I can see the moon is there. So that wants to be the next one along, um, and that's fine. So what I want to do now is <coughs> select the planet and moon precomposed layer, drop down so I can go to the transform. And at time, time being zero, I can keyframe the, or activate keyframing for position and scale. And like this, so that there's obviously two keyframes there. And I can just move it into the point I'd like it to be. I'm happy with it in the middle um, for now, but you could move it into uh, a third um, if you so choose. After you've done that, uh, you can go to eight seconds and move it somewhere maybe to the left a bit and increase the size of it like that. And so now if you just preview through, as the moon moves to the left, the planet is moving the same direction as the moon. And if the moon is increasing in size and the planet is also getting slightly larger if you want it as well, it could give it the look or the effect that the camera is just passing the planet like this. So I'm going to just move it like that and see how that looks. So again this works best if the planet and the moon are kind of both moving in the same direction so they look like they're passing the camera and you can increase the scale ever so slightly of the planet and moon group if you like as well. Um, but it's entirely up to you. So I might just move them up to there and um, that's fine with me. So to make it look like the camera is perhaps orbiting this planet as well, and also to make the star field in the background look a bit more dynamic, uh, I am going to choose to move the star field around uh, like this as well. So with your time slider at zero, um, move your star field, and we need to have the star field moving in the opposite direction to the planet. So if the planet's moving from the right to the left hand side of the frame, I want the stars to move uh, in the other way. So if I just have the stars starting uh, over here, 
which is obviously further this to the left and the planets further to the right. Uh, I'm then going to just drop down and make sure I keyframe the position of those stars. I wouldn't bother keyframing the scale unless you want to simulate a camera lens zooming in because obviously the stars are going to be the same size no matter how close you get to the planet. And then go to 8 seconds over here and move the stars perhaps slightly uh, this way. Okay, and then just have a look like this. And now it should look like the planet, uh, or there's a camera orbiting the planet, and the stars in the background would obviously be, would be moving like that. So if, again, if you hit play, it should give this effect. And again, make it look much more interesting like that. Uh, and I'm not happy that the stars are moving completely perfectly left to right. So if you do want to just maybe move the stars down a bit like this, as you go, so it's a slight diagonal look, it could just give a bit more of a dizzying orbit effect to the planet. So again, the reason this works and looks 3D is because we move the stars in the opposite direction that the planet's going to make it look like the camera is orbiting that planet. So we're shortly going to give um, perhaps a bit of camera shake and even maybe have the camera rotate a bit as well, just so it's even more interesting. And we now need to obviously do that to both the planet and the stars behind it. So now all the sort of camera dynamics effects we're going to have need to be applied to both the planet, its moon and the star field. Basically everything we can see here. So I'm going to select the planet and moon and the star field and go to layer, pre-compose. And I'm going to call it planet and moon and stars just to be absolutely clear, and hit OK. And we'll shortly add some more layers to uh, here, um, or underneath or next to the planet, moves and, and stars, which is going to be the lens scratches and, and things like that, and also a lens flare. Um, but we can now, we're free to rotate the stars, a planet, and its moon all as a group. But this is going to cause a problem. Uh, if I go to rotation, I can see that it's, even though I knew, know that the stars, the image of the stars is actually probably about this big, once we pre-compose stuff, it actually unfortunately crops all images to the size of the frame. And so when you rotate, we can see the edges of the frame coming in and we need to sort that out. So what we can do is increase the size of the canvas of this planet, moon and stars so that when we rotate it, we see more stars um, as we would expect. So if I double click on this planet, moon, moon and stars composite and just to keep these all in order uh, I'm going to drag this tab just below planet, master planet shop, shot and then inside there we can see planet and moon and that's the next one along. So I've moved that to where it should be. Um, and if I click on star field I can see it is an awful, an awful lot bigger than um, than that so and that's good so now what I'm going to do is see if I can see more of these stars here so we need to go to composition composition settings and we need to increase the width and height of this we need to make this larger than HD 1080 so I'm actually going to make it uh, two four hundred and then hit enter whoops Sorry, uh, lock aspect ratio, make sure that's checked. And as you type in a value in here, the bottom value should change as well. And if you deselect, you should see your image uncropped like this. And then you can hit OK. Obviously, I moved my star field uh, like this um, to probably a bit too far to the left. And now I can see, even though I've increased the size of the canvas significantly, I can still see a black area over here. So what I'm going to do is just go to the... Um, just see if we can edit where this animation of the star field takes place. So um, maybe I'll just make it move slightly. So at zero frames, I'm just, whoops, I'm just going to make it move slightly less far um, from there, and unfortunately, slightly less far just to there. Uh, it's still moving, but not quite as far. If I, I could make this larger in Photoshop if I really wanted. 
um, but you may have to do that. Try and make sure you don't get any black areas in here. Move your time slider to a keyframe and move this so you're happy. So now that this canvas is larger, we should, in our master planet shot, we can now see that the canvas was once this big, has now been increased to that size. That the planet and the moon haven't grown in size in this frame, but we've uncropped this image like this. And now if you go and play with the rotation value, uh, we can have a bit more freedom before we start seeing black edges. So what I would like to do is, with my time slider at zero, drag the <coughs> rotation as far as I can in a certain direction um, until, so maybe, can I get to eight? Yeah, I can probably get to about eight. So just be very accurate with this. No, eight was a bit far. Maybe we'll do, so just get it just so you can't see any of these black corners popping in. And then you can keyframe the rotation value there. And we can now go to eight seconds, or maybe just after eight seconds, just to be safe. And then drag the rotation the other way. And it's probably going to end up being minus eight, like that. And now you can go ahead and play that back. And now when you hit play, um, the cold camera should be rotating almost like it's free, free falling through space. And this is something that we see a lot of in some of these modern space 